Hey, 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 YouTube. How is it going? I hope all is well. Today we're going to start a new series where we talk about amplifier building basics. Um, more or less what I'm hoping to do is to help you kind of, if you're on the fence about some sort of things or you're not quite sure where you want to go with it, my hope is I can kind of walk you, walk you down or help you find what side of the fence you want to jump over onto. That's all. So let's talk about some basics though, because there's always that, that option paralysis that you end up with. What should you get this, that, and the other? Let's start with the resistors here. Let's jump over to the screen. So what you're looking at now is a carbon composition resistor in its and how it you know it's made. Uh, so it's got some sort of plastic shell with a carbon and non-conductive material composition that is encased within it. That is what makes carbon composition. Carbon composition. It's literally that. The composition of this carbon and non-conductive material is what makes the value of that resistor. Why don't I have a carbon composition resistor? I don't like them. That is why. Um, why don't I like them? I don't like them because they are noisy. They're the noisiest of all the resistor options there are. They are not temperature stable or time stable. So over time they will drift in value and with temperature they drift in value and they have the lowest tolerance ratio, I guess, if you will. So tolerance, meaning that if you buy a hundred K and it's got a 20% tolerance, that's to say that it could be 20% plus or minus. So you could be getting something that's 80 K to as high as 120 K. So again, it's nice to know when you buy something that when you buy 100K, it's going to be 100K. If I wanted an 80K, I would have bought an 80K, right? So those are the reasons I dislike carbon composition. It's noisy, not as temperature stable, not as time stable, and it's just, eh, the, the tolerance is off. Next in line, in terms of, I guess, performance all around, if you will, is the carbon film. So the carbon film is a, a large step above uh, carbon composition, I, I would say, in terms of performance. Um, it's more temperature stable, it's more stable over time, and it has better tolerances. Um, I think you can usually get carbon film in 10 to 5% tolerances, right in there. Um, so it's not great, but it's still much better than carbon composition. I would be happy building an amplifier all day with carbon film. Um, I do not, however, uh, eh, that's all I'll, I'll leave it at that. So carbon film is a good compromise. If you believe in the hype that metal film sounds sterile, uh, sounds anemic, or just doesn't sound good in the signal path. I use metal film there for the entirety of my amplifiers. I think they sound just fine and that there's nothing wrong with them. I cannot justify the idea of using any other type of resistor anywhere else in the amp because I haven't found any empirical evidence to show otherwise. Uh, what is great about metal film? Metal film is more temperature stable, more, you know, so more stable. Uh, it is more accurate, so tolerance-wise, you can usually get these in 2 to 1% uh, tolerances, and it's more stable over time. So it'll be the same value it is today as it is 10 or 15 years from now. That's all. Um, the other nice thing about metal film is that they don't burst into flames like the other two options do. Uh, these ones are pretty much flame-proof, if not flame-resistant. Um, which is nice because if you do place these things on a PCB or next to some other component, if it does happen to go up in smoke, at least the metal film won't take out other components nearby in a blaze of glory. Uh, metal film are almost always this bluish color in, when it comes to these more generic styles. Uh, whereas carbon film will be almost always that skin color, that beigey color. And then, of course, you've seen the pictures, but if not, here's one of the carbon composition, just in case you didn't know what one looked like. So my favorite, metal film. My second favorite is carbon film. And then my least favorite is carbon composition. Now, there are people that swear on their grandmother's grave that carbon composition is the end-all be-all to great guitar tone. I'm not going to argue that that's true or not. 
just like there are people that swear that metal film is the worst possible thing that you can put in your amp in the signal path, at least anyway. Um, again, I would argue that one I would argue is not true, but pick the one you want. If you can't handle either of those two extremes, you will never go wrong with carbon film. Now, something to note, because noise is a factor, the s that you hear when you turn up your amplifier is not the tubes doing what they do. It's not the tubes conducting. It's actually the shot noise and the thermal noise of the resistor. Carbon composition has the highest hiss. Metal film has the lowest amount of hiss. A way to abate the amount of hiss that a resistor has is to up the wattage value of it. So for a, let's say you only need a quarter watt value in any one given spot and you can't tolerate the noise that it has with a quarter watt value. Well, a way around that to lower the amount of hiss that you get would be to up the wattage to say one watt. So going with higher wattages will lower the amount of hiss that your amp has. And that goes for all three variants of resistor. So there's really no benefit to trying to go too big with the metal film. You can generally go with standard sizes, quarter watt, half watt, uh, because even a quarter watt version of a metal film resistor will be quieter than a one watt version or even a two watt version of a carbon composition. Um, if you even got a two watt version of a carbon film, a quarter watt metal film would still be quieter than the two watt version of the carbon film. There is that. Now there's a couple other types of resistors out there. This one is a metal oxide. Uh, this is used in the power section. Uh, the metal oxide, they're just flame proof. It's coated with a ceramic coating on them and they just, they don't go up in flames. They just kind of burn and crack apart. Um, so you use these in the power section. I'm just showing you for posterity, I guess, if you will. But these ones come in more normal values. Whereas those big white bricks that you see, I didn't bring one out to show you, but those big white bricks that you see are generally lower value resistors. They're lower value, but higher wattage. So they're generally, you know, 10 ohms up to somewhere around 10 to 20 K. They don't get much higher than that generally. Uh, that's where these guys here come in. The different colors of these guys, the metal oxide ones, has to do with the wattage that they are in. So I believe this is a three watt and then two watts come in gray. And then they have the green ones, which are like the, the light or the low mass versions. Uh, those are generally three to four watts. But in either case, um, I may have gotten that wrong. This might be a two watt and maybe the three watt is gray. But that's the only thing that differentiates these is, for the color anyway is the wattage. So that kind of takes care of the uh, resistors. I use these Dale Vichy's. Um, I like them. They are great, I think. Uh, it's a metal film resist. This is a metal film, as is this. What's the difference between these two? The cost. This one here you can get for 10, 20 cents, maybe. Uh, maybe less, depending on the bulk that you buy them. This one here, about a buck, almost a dollar. Uh, it's a little less than a dollar, but still. That being said, there's really nothing different between these two other than this one is a slightly better version of this. Um, I use these guys because I'm building amplifiers to sell. I need to justify the cost. I can't sell a premium amp and feel good about it when I'm putting in generic stuff. So that's my only thing there. Pick the one that you want. Obviously, there's bougie versions of the of all variants of those. So find the budget and the option that works for you. Next, let's move on to capacitors. So let's start with these guys here. So this here is, let's get it in the right orientation there. This guy here is just a generic polyfilm or whatever you want to call it. Nothing wrong with this guy here. These come for eh, just under a buck or about a buck anyway. Absolutely nothing wrong with these. I use, however, this guy. This is the Sozo. Uh, why do I use the Sozo? No real reason other than these are a little more readily available. Um, the price is a little bit better than some of the other ones, but a little more egregious, egregious than some of the others. Um, and because I'm prototyping my amps with these guys here, I kind of feel like I don't want to, you know, I, I want to prototype with something that's kind of a toss away. I only use it once. So if it, you know, if it's not the value I want, I'll 
take it out and then I'll put the value, the next value in line and this will get tossed. But so is there a five to six dollar difference in 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 sound between these? I do not think so. Honestly, I don't. Now, there's obviously many other options out there. There is Orange Drop. There is Synergy. There is Jupiter. There is Mallory. There is, uh, I think Mojo makes some. I think even uh, JJ is starting to make some of these things. There's all kinds of different versions out there, right? Um, pick one. Just pick one. You, you're not going to have an amp that goes from sounding like absolute dookie filled with a bunch of these generic ones to sounding like God's gift to guitar amps by replacing all of the capacitors in it with something like this. Not going to happen. Your amp's going to sound just dandy with these generic ones in there. So I'm not a fan of the orange drops. That is a me thing. If that's what you like, go that way. The reason I use these guys is because I designed the amp with these and I feel that these are the next best thing that's, you know, worth selling to somebody. That's me thing. All right. So there's a couple of other options here. This is more or less my orange drop variant here, if you will. It's similar in regards to this. I use these for the tone pots and guitars. So eh, if you like orange drops and you believe that that hype, go for it. Can't go wrong. Now, silver mica. I like using the silver micas as my treble bleed caps or whatever you want to call it, treble peaking caps. So I use these in, uh, in tone stacks or in... Um, uh, you know, like the, the, the treble bleed cap that goes over the top of the volume pots or something like that. Um, silver mic is good for high frequencies. Uh, I think they sound nice. I would like to try the ceramics. Um, but I don't like the, the cheap ceramic discs that you buy that look like a bug got squished or something like that. Um, the problem is, is that the, the ones that are really, really nice that have a coating on them kind of like this and that don't go microphonic, is that they're harder to find. My whole thing is that it would be kind of nice to be able to find stuff easily without having to go through a million drop down menus to get there or trying to find some secret or private stash that somebody's got somewhere. So these are all readily available on websites that you can go to right now that you don't have to search too hard to find. So that's why I use these ones here. Um, maybe one of these days uh, I'll use ceramic the nicer ones that you know vichy and all them makes but they're just harder to find i want things to be a little more readily available that's it now we get to the power section the capacitors in the power section i'm going to say this is one spot that you do not want to skinch uh spend your money in this position i like f and t that is a me thing but i think they honest to god make the best stuff that we can get for the type of stuff that we are doing you are not ever going to find f and t in you know your everyday home brew electronics it's only going to be stuff that we build uh so these are a little bit pricier five to fifteen dollars on average i'd say so these are pretty pricey comparatively to something that is actually much much better than it which is like these nishikons here so this nishikon this is a cs series uh i believe this thing is like a buck maybe two um, but it is far better than this guy here which is unfortunate because I would love to use these in my amps, but these are harder for me to sell. So guitarists and many other, you know, home builders and stuff like that, we're, you know, we're used to seeing these things here. So that's what is easiest to sell to people, unfortunately. Do not get the cheap ones, those Jacksons and the, and the you know, the ICs. The, the, they're just, they're cheap for a reason. You want to get the best stuff you can get for the power section. So I say go that route. Spend the money there and don't look back. Um, f and doesn't make all the values that you need for most power sections and most other parts of the amp. If I could fill my amp entirely with f and for the polarized caps, I would. Um, however, Sprague generally has some values that f and doesn't. So I will use Sprague in some spots. I do not like Sprague for the common power supply sections though. Um, I say avoid them if you can. Um, but I, I think their, their era of being a bad company has kind of gotten past them at this point. So I'm not against trying to go with them now, if that's the way you want to go with it, they are a little less expensive than these guys, but not by much. Um, but definitely keep it on the higher end if you can. 
Um, and then, of course, if you're not stuck on having to use, you know, radial mounted parts and you can go away with axial, then go by all means. Uh, did I say axial and radial? I got it mixed up. Um, the axial stuff versus the radial stuff. If you can afford to build your amp with this stuff here, go for it. Um, it's obviously going to be cheaper and these are better capacitors far and beyond than any other option that you can buy that is made specifically for our craft. Um, that's all I can say about that. So I hope I, I helped you kind of, did I say, I still got it backwards. This is axial. This is radial, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope this kind of helps you figure out where you want to go. I hope I helped you find a side of the fence to drop on. I hope maybe I answered some questions that you may have had about why you would pick one resistor or one uh, capacitor over another. Um, all I can say is when it comes to the capacitors, it really doesn't matter that much in, in terms of the signal side of things. Um, pick one and be done. You're good to go. The power section, keep it, keep it expensive. Spend your money there. As far as the resistors, uh, middle of the road, you can never go wrong with carbon film. If you just, if you're not sure which way you want to go at all, just go carbon film and be done with it. Um, if you, honest to God, think that your amp's going to be ten times better with carbon composition, then go that way by all means. And if you really just want the quietest, most stable amp that you could possibly have, then go metal film. That, that's really all I can say. I hope this helps. Thank you so much. We got more of these coming. We'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.